The Rugby League World Cup is a tournament where reputations are made and heroes aspire to greatness. Great heartache, pain and burdens fall upon our heroes. During these times, all Rugby League fans relate to them. Since the first World Cup in France in 1954, the legends of the greatest game of all have known this to be true. Heroism is not only in the man, but in the occasion. Australia celebrates a centenary of Rugby League. The World Cup returns down under to mark this special anniversary. Yeah, the Kiwis. The World Cup is laced with enthusiasm, and that is the excitement, inspiration and motivation, where the dreams of many rest in the hands of a few. These men will carry the hopes of their people. On behalf of everybody, welcome to all nations. Welcome to the Rugby League World Cup. All the global tribes of Rugby League tell the same story, that talent wins games, but teamwork, intelligence and passion wins a World Cup. This tournament will see these men overcome difficulties, obstacles and setbacks in their pursuit of World Cup immortality, and that comes only from inner strength. If you look inside your heart, you don't have to be afraid of what you are. There's an answer. If you reach into your soul, and the soul that you know will melt away. Then a hero comes along with the strength to carry on and you cast your fears aside and you know you can survive so when you feel like hope is gone look inside you and be strong you'll finally see the truth that I hear kicked off the tournament in the North Queensland city of Townsville. The Kumos were given little hope against the English. Tackle for England, and they attack the short side, and over goes Gardner. There was fear that the gulf between one of the traditional powers of World Rugby League and the so-called Minnows would lead to a lopsided result. Get a cut-out ball, a good one! Chan will score! Jason Chan has got Papua New Guinea! At half time, a major upset was looming. Papua New Guinea going to the break, up 16 points to 12. Papua New Guinea, they've gone up again. They've gone off again. The second half saw the Kumuls with a mountain of possession, but a series of forward pass rulings devastated their chances. Wilshire, Wilshire, able to unload. Now more for the corner. Hayne sent forward from Nightingale. The setup was outstanding. It was a testament to the professional attitude adopted by PNG. Despite the loss, the crowd cheered for them as if they had won the match. Plenty of spirit and camaraderie we within the group. Yeah, definitely, man. We're going to take a lot away from this game. It um, gives us a lot of confidence in the next game up against New Zealand. Um, you know, the boys can come out and play like that and improve on a, you know, a few little things and little areas. Uh, you know, we'll still give New Zealand a good run. England coach Tony Smith remained confident of his side's campaign despite the scare. The Lions will need to improve dramatically to threaten Australia in their next game. We found out a whole lot there tonight, which is good. And, um, you know, we've 
we found out a fair bit about ourselves and about our character as well to to be able to you know not play great and still win and find find a way to win and turn things around when when uh, things are going against you is a is a great thing to have Australia's capital, Canberra, was the venue for the first match of Pool 2. Scotland and France was always going to be a clash of styles. The French boasted a mean pack of forwards, while the Scots had the edge with an exciting backline. The video referee dismissed two of Scotland's tries in the 36-18 loss. Here is a decision from Phil Cooley. He says no try. And a play the ball and turnover on the last of the knock on coming from Michael Robertson. The decisions sunk the morale of the Scots, who conceded two late tries to go down valiantly. Gives it away for Christoph Moe. A terrific try from the Shed to Clark. Courage and true heroism would be on display when Australia tackled New Zealand. 24 hours before kickoff, Jonathan Thurston's uncle was tragically murdered. Despite those difficult personal circumstances, the Kangaroo star showed that in times of great sadness and emotional pain, a true hero stands tall. Thurston, Lockyer, Stuart Duck out of the way, Ingles will score, there's the first try of the game. Australia has players of exceptional attacking flair with the likes of Inglis, Slater and co. They entered the tournament as favourites and coach Ricky Stewart chose to field a strong team, including a debutante, Canberra's Joel Monaghan. The New Zealanders were well beaten. Australia's reputation was further enhanced as a rugby league superpower. I got rid of Malai, goes over 40, he's over 30, Jonathan gets a ball to play, came off Slater, no knock on, try Australia. No knock on, I don't think. The controversy was after the match, when the World Cup officials warned Australian fullback Billy Slater that he would be suspended if he persisted using feet first slides to prevent tries. I don't know, mate, he's been warned not to do it, but he did it tonight and he executed it uh, correctly. So would you prefer preferred him not to do it tonight? How risky? Well, he's, so, he's stopped a try. <coughs> 24 hours after the death of his uncle, Jonathan Thurston showed the world what true courage is. Thurston's efforts would long live in the annals of World Cup history. Congratulations to the man of the match tonight, just on behalf of everyone in rugby league, condolences to the family. It was also another win for the host nation when the Australian Indigenous defeated the New Zealand Maori 34 26. Campbell wants it, the captain does a little kick. Campbell gets it back, got through the tackle, fed off loads for Jensen. Preston Campbell goes to the box of drinks. The visitors led 26-22 with nine minutes on the clock until the dynamic Reese Wesser seared through for his second try. Another four-pointer right on full time had all the Australian fans in raptures. A contest that showcased the individual brilliance of both teams. Match four of the World Cup was an entertaining affair between Tonga and Ireland. Considered rank outsiders, the Irish kept pace with their more illustrious rivals, and they were not intimidated by the size and strength of the Tongan pack. To the surprise of many, the Irish snatched the lead after 33 minutes. 
thanks to first half tries to fullback Michael Platt and winger Damian Blanche. Now there's a good ball into space. They go. A chance here for the Irishman. Fitzpatrick, the ball is forward. The referee said no. I thought it was forward. He's going to check on the grounding. And there is the try. And Ireland are in front. They lead by eight points to six. But just before the break, Tongan winger Cooper Vuna gave his team a slim lead. Here's the chase. Cooper Vuna flying. Platt is there. He let it bounce. And Cooper Vuna has scored the try. I'm not sure what Michael... After the interval, Blanche crossed over for his second try after a brilliant offload from Sean Gleeson. Now here's Grix. An opportunity. Finnegan. Finnegan then gives the ball on the outside to Gleeson. He pops it over the top. And Blanche has got himself a double. They're in again. The match was a seesawing affair. Tonga regained the lead with 15 minutes to go. And when Blanche caught a perfectly weighted Liam Finn kick, the unthinkable became a possibility. Defensively, it's a well-placed kick. Blanche, clean take. That's a, try. Clean. That's a try. Three tries. The first ever hat trick for Ireland. With each team playing with such intensity, the big hit shook the grandstand. Oh, you're very condensed. Oh. With eight minutes remaining and Ireland holding on to a 2018 lead, 5'8 Felitti Matteo produced his magical 40-20 kick. He's let it go of the touchline. Has he got any idea it's a 40-20? That's the play of the game, surely. In the ensuing set, winger Essie Tonga crossed over out wide, ending any fairy tale finish for Ireland. Here's Jennings, numbers, long ball out to Tonga in the corner. Can he get it down? He does. Oh, definitely, yeah. I was up there playing at the end, so, um, lucky the Irish, I thought they got us at the end, so, you know, I was just thankful that, you know, we pulled through and, you know, come away with the points, and hopefully we can build on that and, you know, put in a, a, a better performance and uh, get some off. It was the Battle of the Pacific at the World Cup when Samoa faced arch-rivals Tonga. The mood was set by Samoan captain Nigel Bunganar when he moved around the back of his players, issuing instructions as the Siva Tau, or war dance, was being performed in four parts. <laughs> Newcastle's NRL winger Cooper Vuna led Tonga's reply the Sippy Tower, this mighty war dance, finished less than two metres from the Samoans' faces. Well. These two great rugby league nations produced entertaining football for their passionate supporters. Quick play, the ball from Manu. Leo Latu going at the line. He gets across the line, and we are all tied up. The score changed three times in the first half, with Samoa taking a 14-12 lead into the sheds. There's Telepo showing it one way, going back the other. Willie Talao gives it away for Matthew, tied for the corner. In the end, there was two sweeping movements by Samoa that clinched the four tries to two victory. A 90-metre intercept try by Bungana. with nobody in front of him. Chasing and chasing hard, but they won't catch him. Bungana goes the length of the field. And Samoa. George Carmon finishing a 60 metre effort after second row Alagi Setu burst through the line off a wonderful short pass from teammate Dave Solomon. Great off by Dave Solomon. And here is Lagi Setu with players in support. Carmon back on the inside. Will set sail for the line. He'll go all the way. Georgie Carmon. Gets a try for Samoa that gives them a six-point lead. It will be eight in just a few moments. 
This match entertained the spectators who idolized their heroes and reinforced that the health of rugby league in the Pacific is alive and well. Of their heroes, almost 12,000 fans. You know, it was a great night uh, for International Rugby League, you know, if you think about it, because there's obviously two teams uh, that are ready to go on the international stage. And, um, you know, let's start playing all the time. You know, Pacific Islanders are very passionate people and, and very loyal. And, and uh, I guess it just showed, uh, you know, the emotion that, that both teams brought to the game. Um, in the second half, we just didn't complete our sets and field position, and it just all added up. Uh, and um, congratulations to the Samoan side, and, you know, I hope they win the World Cup now. Fiji produced the biggest upset of the World Cup to date with an inspiring 42 points to 6 demolition of France. The team sung Hallelujah prior to kickoff and their belief in God and themselves quickly manifested into points. The bookmakers had the Fijians as 500 to 1 outsiders to win the World Cup. The French had no answers to the brilliance of their opponent's attacking flair. Here is Naguama looking for his man, Uate, who is too good on his feet for the French defence. Much heralded winger Aku Uate posted a hat trick of tries. This amazing 90 metre effort had all of the fans on their feet. Fullback Jared Hayne scored two tries in the run. He proved to be a handful for the beleaguered French defence. On his way to the line, he stops, he pivots, he scores! <laughs> and they just love it here in Wollongong. Fiji attributed its win to a higher power than themselves. We're a pretty spiritual side, you know. Every morning, every night, before training, after training, we pray. And we had a lot of faith in ourselves and in God. New Zealand's World Cup campaign took a scare when star 5'8", Benji Marshall, did not return for the second half against Papua New Guinea with an injured hamstring. We didn't see a Benji for the full second half. Anything to worry about? Oh, no, no. I just uh, hammy tightened up a bit in the first half and uh, I wanted to go back on, but Stephen Wayne told me to stay off. Marshall played a hand in all three of his team's first four tries. Marshall, great step, throws the ball straight out to Perrin. Beautiful stuff, Benji boy. The Kummels, more than holding their own in Pool 1, which included superpowers Australia and England. Papua New Guinea showed their true grit, but spirit ensures that in time, great things will come from this emerging rugby league nation. Mate, we've got like, a country of over 6 million people backing us, and it's just really emotional, you know. You know, anyone off the street, Benji, come up to us and wish us well on that, so... Uh, yeah, we're playing for them, mate. New Zealand showed they were prepared to avoid getting stuck in a predictable form of play, and made sure they were ready to exploit any possible chance to take the opposition by surprise. But England play Australia, here's Isaac Luke, hello! He's safe, get that up ya! Get it up ya, Zed Gus! He scored off the try, he is making a statement. As is often the case, being the favourite can weigh a team down, but not for Australia. When they walked onto Melbourne's Telstra Dome to do battle with England, they knew something about themselves that their opponents had no idea about. Australia dazzled and baffled England with rugby league brilliance. Centre Greg Inglis's consummate artistry cannot be categorised, but all the warning signs were there for England. Now for Smith, goes to the 10, gives it to Lockyer, goes behind Stewart, away from Slater Brink, that's an in for oh, hang on a moment, did he get it down? I think he has. 
Australia dominated by immediately seizing the initiative, controlling the pace and direction of the match throughout. Ellis has gone to ground, ball to ground, Archer said knock on. Looking for a quick play, the ball, Lockyer went to dummy half. The ball's gone away, the ball breaks They had a commanding half-time lead. The English were hapless. Attackers colliding with one another only exacerbated their woes. Inglis and Slater are teammates for 2007 NRL Champions Melbourne. Their telepathy was on show as they turned defence into attack in a flash. Slater bewitching the English in one of the greatest tries in World Cup Rugby League history. Way to push off Greggy there, and he just uh, gives those balls away all the time. And you now I got halfway down the field, and I, I knew I didn't have the legs, so I don't know how I got there, but um, I don't think I recovered from that. Within two games, Australia had garnered a respect and irresistible momentum, which Coach Stewart warned would only intensify. We've got to have a relentless attitude, and we want to take every game as it comes, and and the uh, uh, and go for the throat. For England, the 52-4 defeat was humiliating. They promised so much prior to the tournament, now their morale hit rock bottom. Ireland were given little hope in defeating Samoa to progress to a semi-final qualifier. They needed to win by five points to finish on top of the pool. The most important thing for the Irish throughout this World Cup was to keep on trying when there seemed to be no hope at all. Perhaps Nigel Bungana has scored. They repelled Samoa in the first 10 minutes, denying two potential tries to Nigel Bungana and Hooker turned CUC after the video referee disallowed them. No try penalty. After surviving the early onslaught, Ireland piled on three tries in seven minutes, with winger Pat Richards using his height advantage to touch down for his first. They have been bashed black and blue. Somehow they come up with first points. Oh, and what? Oh, just a... Two more quick tries to Simon Finnegan and centre's Sean Gleeson had the Samoans shell-shocked. He pops it over the top, looking for Blanche. Try number three for Ireland. In a stoppage and penalty strewn contest, the Irish led at half time. They looked to be fading when the siren sounded for the break. To the air, and it's a nasty one for Michael Platt, who spills it and try. Vangana, hoping this Richards crossed over again after the interval. In a period when the Simones should have reasserted themselves, they instead provided little more than errors. The hulking winger completed his hat trick with two minutes remaining, helping Ireland to one of the greatest upsets in World Cup history. Looking for another try, and they have found it! I think it was a big night for the Irish Rugby League tonight. You know, we got what we deserved, I guess, in the end, and you know, as I say, you know, the Irish were good. Rugby League nurtures dreams of achieving self-confidence. Throughout the tournament, Scotland have always kept their heads held high. Against Fiji, who had just put 42 points past the French, many thought the result would be a formality. But in the greatest game of all, there is no such thing as a sure thing. He 
The brave hearts were determined to do everything possible as they had never experienced the feeling of victory at a World Cup. Down the short side, he's got support there. The wing three quarter steal for the corner is over. Has he got it down? The referee's going to check. If momentum carried him over there, there's not a problem with that at all. Fiji centre Karori was dragged short of the line in the 22nd minute. But he set up his side's first try with a brilliant offload for Semi Tajulala. He's outside, he runs across field. Now he links up with the outside support. Tajulala for the corner. Inside Robertson and Fiji are on the board. In the final minute of the first half, fullback Michael Robertson gave his side a surprise lead heading into the break. They had to hit the post and it has. Here's a chance. They may have scored. Henderson diving. Robertson diving. Did they get there before the dead ball line? And that's a try, yes. Michael Robertson will get the try. That's a try. Three minutes into the second half, Jason Baikuya scored with the help of his teammates as Fiji reduced the margin to two points. Left at gap, he's over the line. Can he get it down? They're trying to hold him up. I'll take him over the dead ball line, but he's got it down. When Semi Tajulala crossed over for his second, it appeared Fiji had secured victory. Tajulala for the corner will score, and Fiji for the first time in the game are in front with eight minutes to go. The Fijians always start every game with a prayer, but it was Scotland who received the miracle. Winning the ball from a short restart, they charged down the field to score the try that secured its first World Cup win. He comes that way to the big front row of Wilts who barges over and scores. Scotland have level up. You know, it was a scrappy game, game of, you know, knock-ons and absolute dreadful kicks for myself, but the lads dug in there and, you know, the spirit from lads were outstanding. Our short-term goal was to finish in the top of our pool and um, we've successfully done that, so um, big ups to the boys for that, but um, yeah, at the same time disappointed that tonight. Tonga and Scotland kicked off the playoffs. Both of these great nations know pride is a personal commitment, an attitude which separates excellence from mediocrity. The Scots were missing inspirational captain Danny Bruff and playing in oppressive 30 degree plus heat. The Tongans had sorrows to overcome. Coach Jim Dimmock's father-in-law passed away on game eve, and team manager Bob Jones was in hospital after experiencing chest pains. The Pacific Islanders put that aside. They were simply too strong for their Northern Hemisphere counterparts. Crossfield kick, Mateo leaping high, grabs the ball, gets it down. The first try of the match goes to Tonga. They lead four points to nil. Scotland failed to back up their shock win over Fiji. Their first ever victory at a World Cup. Ball Emilio, ball on the ground with Silly for the corner. Can he reach out? He does. He scores the try. They just ran it of troops, Scotland. They trailed 24 0 at half time. The hapless Scots could only watch as Cooper Vuna dashed 90 metres to score. Time to try right before half time. In fact, it's Cooper Vuna. What about the pickup from Vuna? Tonga had superior coordination and their unpredictability enthralled the sellout crowd at Rockhampton's Brown Park. He's still going any power. He's still going any power. Now he links up with Jennings and Jennings will score a try, but it was all any power. Scotland's World Cup campaign finished on a losing note, but the Bravehearts won many fans and are poised for better things to come. So to win a game against Fiji, it was always going to be difficult to back that up today. Um, but again, I, I just think um, hopefully it will kick start a little bit of interest up in Scotland. And um, you know these fellas at the side of me and the, the, uh, the, the, the fellas in the changing room have been an absolute pleasure um, to, to Scotland rugby league. England, after their humiliating defeat to Australia, were attempting to redeem themselves against New Zealand in its final pool match. The Lions did not need to be reminded that honour has to be won, not lost.
For the Kiwis, a victory would give them a major psychological edge heading into the semi-finals. The mind games began prior to kickoff, with the English turning their backs on the Harper. England made a great start. Nicky Hyam and a hooker for James Roby dived low and hard to grab the first try. Right in front of the uprights, three metres away, chance for England, he's over! Hyam has scored the number nine! Nicky Hyam, the number nine, has scored! They fell apart at mark and defence, the Kiwis. Five minutes later, Keith Senior beat off winger Jason Nightingale, and he found support in the form of a lively Rob Burrow. Senior draws the final line, gets it away to Little Burrow. Burrow will make it. Burrow will score for England after Keith Senior made a big break. England were relentless and led 24-8 after 28 minutes. After Burrow got his second try, thanks to a delightful sidestep. Burrow steps away from Blair, he'll score! Burrow has done exactly that! He's left them grasping in midair. Blair came up! There would be no more joy for England as they collapsed in a heap in the second half, allowing New Zealand back into the match. Lee Harrison gets it away! And then England come in contact! This will be a try for Nathan Fee! The Kiwis then stepped up a gear. Winger Manu Vatabai crossing over for four tries. Back to get away from the defence. Marshall Hohaya, not again. Oh, don't tell me. The Hohaya Vatabai daily double has struck again. Ah. I've never scored four tries ever. And, uh, this is my first time, and um, I'm pretty lucky that I scored those four tries, and I wouldn't have done them without the boys. Despite the loss, Coach Tony Smith is adamant the Lions are capable of winning the trophy. But he could not disguise his frustration with his team. Yeah, disappointing, mate. Yeah, very disappointing, a bit angry about it. We're all ang angry about it. We're angry with the second half. We've got to get angrier, make sure that those things don't happen. New Zealand, hot favourites to repeat the dose in the semi-final rematch. France and Samoa were both disappointed with their campaigns, but they learnt there are no secrets to success at the World Cup. Results come from preparation, hard work and learning from failure. Both teams were determined to end on a high. France fought valiantly, but ended their World Cup in a heavy defeat as Samoa recorded a crushing eight-try victory in the ranking playoff. He's outside, a little bit of basketball. That's magic from Samoa. During the World Cup, Papua New Guinea developed a cult-like following. They won the hearts and minds of league fans around the world with their pride and commitment to the jersey. Facing the might of Australia in its final pool match, the Kummels had already won the respect of the Kangaroos before kickoff. Tears in the eyes of some of the players during the national anthem suggested the Kummels were in no mood to roll over. Stanley Gatte playing his final match was a handful for his opponents as usual. Shows us the dummy to the right then, finds the line down the left side, the old fox. Debutant David Williams scored a hat-trick of tries, capping off an extraordinary 2008, winning the NRL Premiership with Manly in his debut season. The result was never in doubt, nor was the Kummel's fighting spirit. And 
there were plenty of bricks in that wall. They refused to give up, and showing tremendous determination, they grabbed a try that sent the crowd wild. Papa Giggity on the last half, a little kick in goal. Yes! That's yes! scored! Mettiere! I think has scored! And he's got the try! Mettiere has scored a try for Papa New Guinea against the World Cup champions. The indomitable Gatte was carried off the pitch after announcing his retirement. The gallant display of his side made it a fitting exit for one of the sport's great characters. And that step is a joy. Started off uh, with his jumper, and I'm still in the dream world. And uh, what a great way to finish against the world champions. Um, I'm so proud, so proud about these young kids because they got a great future ahead of them. And I uh, can't say much, man. Very emotional. A great deal was at stake for Ireland and Fiji in the crucial World Cup semi-final qualifier. The victor was only 80 minutes away from destiny. A date with Australia. For Fiji, greatness is a spiritual condition. Irish believed it was their time. Rugby League World Cup football is not a profession. It's a destiny. And that's what the greatest game of all is all about. Fiji got off to the perfect start after two minutes when Simon Finnegan charged down Aaron Groom's kick. But Groom got possession back and sent Captain Wes Nagama to the line. He's got Akuate on his outside. He may not need him. He's still going, Wes. They won't track him down. He comes to Damien Blanche. Crashes across the top of the Irish winger. And Wes... But Ireland's response was swift as some neat plays across the line allowed winger Damien Blanche room to move. Ireland were well in the game at half time, trailing 12-10, but the Fijians were far too strong after the interval, when a sustained period of pressure put them in control. Goes back to the short side, here's Neulea, now a ball off the Irish, it comes back, and getting across Jason Bukuya has scored the try that extends the lead for Fiji. Fiji opened up the game, running in more tries. Aku Uate crossed for his second. A semi-final meeting with Australia was booked. A chance for Uate. He'll get across the line. He grabs another one to add to his try-scoring tally for the tournament. Fiji's prayer is the key to heaven, but they believe their faith unlocks the door, and they now believe rugby league's place in Fiji is assured. And it's a big boost for our development back home in Fiji. And I think all the people in Fiji are watching us. Uh, we, we one of the spots that always look down for. So I think after this World Cup, I believe will be the number one game in Fiji. Fiji receives three hundred thousand dollars for reaching the semis. Ireland's coach, banking his side, will go one better in the 2013 World Cup. Um, I understand that there's another World Cup possibly in five years and that, that's a good learning period for the island team and if we can get regular international fixtures I'm sure that we can go beyond what we've done this year. England had promised so much before the World Cup got underway but delivered very little in the pool matches. In the semi-final, the Lions needed to find some true grit against New Zealand. For the Kiwis, they were looking to inflict a second loss upon the English in consecutive weeks and book their place in the final. England stared down the haka this time, unlike previously when they turned their backs on it. <laughs> New Zealand was inspired. They opened a 16-0 lead in just 22 minutes. 
the ground. Marshall keeps it alive. Gets it on. Perrin will score. Sam Perrin improves the position. The Lions' defensive woes are exposed for all to see. Time and time again, their players fail to cope with the use of dummy and decoy runners out wide. A bullocking run from captain Jamie Peacock finally got England on the board on the half hour mark. England continued its fight back right on the stroke of half time when Danny Maguire touched down for this sensational four pointer. Both sides traded tries, but New Zealand was always in control of the match. England struggled to play catch-up footy. When Benji Marshall pounced to cross over in the left corner, the Kiwis booked their place in the final. Yeah, look, um, it was disappointing to let that lead go. Um, we sort of let our guard down, trying to protect our lead, but just happy to get through to the final, mate. Um, you know, none of that matters anymore. We're through to the final, so we're, we're alive for another week. For England, the finger pointing started immediately. Coach Tony Smith saying Super League had to evolve to counter the Southern Hemisphere's game. You know, what's the most important way to, to play? You know, is it to entertain the crowds and or is it to become number one in the world? And we, at some stage, that question needs to be asked. It's pretty embarrassing, to be honest. Come all this way, and you don't pull up to scratch at all. Fiji's belief in God had carried them to a World Cup semi-final against the might of Australia. They believe God makes three requests of his children. Do the best you can, where you are, with what you have, now. But not all men are born equal, especially when it comes to the Australian team, brimming with talent across the park. Fiji were given little chance of pulling off a biblical-sized upset. Here comes Kevin Hayne Lace, the tight. The result was never in doubt as Australia ran in 10 tries. The skill of Billy Slater continued to amaze league fans. Greg Inglis's combination of determination and talent cannot be denied. Greg Inglis, Del Monaghan positions himself. Inglis, has he got this down? That is unbelievable athleticism. Jared Haynes' hit on Darren Lockyer ensured the Australian skipper would be sore for several days. Five eighth Noile also got into the act. The Australians also made sure they gave as good as they got. One in ten chance. Oh, Aston Sims! Good boy. Yes. Oh, Cooper. Yeah. Yeah. Um. There'll be a few bumps and bruises tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. yeah but, there was a few. Um. A few guys uh, got a few big hits tonight. See the way we play today. Just amazing. I was one of the players that played in the 95 World Cup. I think it was uh, 76 points to win, and I was glad there was 50 points today. Fiji finished the match as they started, in prayer. Their spirits lifted by an outstanding performance in the 2008 World Cup. All the so-called experts agreed the World Cup final would be predictable. Australia would win again. Words are a dime a dozen, but action and demonstration are much more powerful and meaningful. The Haka and the kangaroos' reaction to it was surely a prelude of unexpected things to come. New Zealand immediately took the game up to the kangaroos. Benji Marshall unable to ground the ball. Very close to the dead ball line, Marshall made the decision, no, no try. 
Australia has held the trophy since 1975 and its grip on it appeared safe when Billy Slater and Darren Lockyer combined. The elusive senior Landers heading for the corner, got a ball inside, Lockyer will score, touch by that and by, Lockyer improves the position. You can't give him one iota. The Kangaroos scored again when Slater's pass out wide sent David Williams to the line. Australia led 10-0 and the Kiwis were in trouble. But when Lockyer lost control of the ball over the line, many sensed this was an omen. New Zealand went into the match as underdogs and Jeremy Smith made sure they had bitten back hard. Now for Jeremy Smith, he'll make it, he's over for the Melbourne. Minutes later, the video referee awarded New Zealand another try after ruling Anthony LaFranchi had raked the ball from Marshall, with David Falongo scooping up the ball for Jerome Rapati to touch down. It is a try. It is a four-pointer. Isaac Luke added the extras, and the Kangaroos trailed for the first time in the match. But this World Cup would be won and lost several times over. Australia's next try was sheer perfection in every detail. Nothing can be added or subtracted. It's going to lock here at three, number three. Australia, 16-12 at the break, but uncharacteristic handling has helped New Zealand, and Lance Ohio sold the biggest dummy to Darren Lockyer. Where they're going, Ohio, Lance Ohio goes over, puts the ball down, and Klein points to the spot. Then in the 61st minute, Billy Slater, the world's best player produced the tournament's biggest blunder. Hangs out his right hand, going into touch, throws the pass recklessly. Oh! New Zealand try, Marshall scores. A Slater speculator. Slater kicking himself harder than he threw the ball. The World Cup was slipping from Australia's grasp. The question now being asked: Could New Zealand hang on? But Australia found space out wide. The lead would now be just two points. Then the drama. Hollywood could not have scripted it better. Video referee Steve Ganson would adjudicate that Joel Monaghan took out Lance Ohio with 10 minutes remaining. See what the players think. All I've tried to do is put some balance in the argument. Oh. It's a penalty try. Yeah. It's a penalty try. Goodness gracious me. 26 plays. The upset of the century was complete. This World Cup taught everyone never bet on stability or lasting order. Time changes everything. Personally, first of all, personal triumph. It has made up, uh, you know, came a long way. Um, I don't know what to well, say. You won in 2005 with the Tigers. Where does this rank? Is this up there with that? Oh, it's up there, mate. It's um, probably to equal, you know, um, from where I've come from, all the injuries I've had, all the setbacks, uh, you know, to get here and uh, to pull that off. Uh, just stoked, mate. Kiwi captain Nathan Taylor stated. I'm assuming, mate, this must be the greatest moment in your footy career. Oh, it is. By far. Um, you know, I've had a few chances in big games, but you know, this, this is the biggest for me. New Zealand coach Stephen Kearney. Steve, congratulations. Uh, thanks, Matty. It was a, you know, the, the lads just, it was a wonderful effort by them tonight. We came here with a real uh, specific plan. and right, we, we put them at a place that they're not used to, and we got the goods tonight. Congratulations to New Zealand. Um, I'd swap, swap this medal any day for a win, but not to be. Australian coach Ricky Stewart said his team had no ifs, buts or maybes. Please don't make this about, don't make this too much about Australia. Show some, uh, show some journal, journalistic ability and 
couldn't wait for New Zealand. I mean, they were better than us tonight, they won the game, so ride it accordingly. Don't try and look for another side avenue to get out of them. The Kiwis had a secret weapon. Australian super coach Wayne Bennett. He worked on the players' self-belief, while head coach Stephen Kearney prepared them tactically. Proving people of great faith can achieve the impossible. And at a World Cup, everyone has the right to dream heroic dreams. The Rugby League World Cup 2008 has been a celebration of the greatest game of all. It has inspired and united people around the globe. Australia celebrated the game centenary by hosting the most successful tournament ever. In a month of non-stop action, we saw our heroes carry our hopes and dreams. We cheered and cried with them. But more importantly, we dreamed as one. Knowing the future of Rugby League has never been brighter and its best days lie ahead. After 100 years, Rugby League remains the people's game. It has survived and evolved because of its ability to adapt with the times, good and bad. In 1954, the World Cup was a brave pioneer. Now it stands tall among the elite sports of the universe. This World Cup has made a difference. We all made this game stronger. No other sport can boast that its people is its heart and soul. As we look forward to the next 100 years, Rugby League is in safe hands. It has a rich, diverse history, a passionate following, and a future that will stand the test of time. This has been a production for the Rugby League International Federation by IMG Sports Media.